Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society. He has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now. Here are your hosts, Craig and Cam, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information. Hey, folks, how we doing out there? Hey, everybody. And we're back. Not we are. Here we go. It's like the Abba Costello routine. We're back. That's it. Who's, Who's on back? first? I don't know. He's on second. But we're back. We're both on third. From where? No, no, no. Where's uh, across the street? That third yeah. base. No, yeah. no. <laughs> it's not that kind of show. <laughs> well, I should hope not. Yeah. All right. So let's tell everybody who we are. This is Tiki Central Canada. And I am Craig. I am your bartender for the hour and your uh, mixologist and um, hopefully information. And I'm Cam. Uh, I'm somewhat of the everyman doofus and uh, I'm hoping to learn a little bit today. <laughs> uh, give yourself a little more credit than that, Cam. Come on now. I'm sorry. Doofus. <laughs> Exactly how many of you had? I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is me sober. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, wow, uh, so I need to see the drunk inside of you. Yeah, oh, geez. yeah, okay. yeah it's time to get surly. But um, so what are we going to talk about today, Craig? So today we're going to talk actually about the Singapore Sling. Now, Singapore, Singapore sling. sling is a pretty famous drink. It goes around like the world. when you break your arm and uh, you're in Put Singapore? Put it in a sling? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, I guess I never thought of it from that perspective. That would be a Singapore sling. It would indeed. Yes, yeah. but actually, this is actually not a. Tr- this is actually a tropical drink. But guess what? It's not a tiki drink. You don't say. No, it's I not thought a tiki all drinks. tropical drinks kind of fell into tiki. No, no. Well, the drinkage. tiki culture, uh, the Trader Vic, the Don the Beachcomber. This mm-hmm. is not falling into that category. I see. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, so if it's not a tiki, question. well, yeah. So, so why, like, like, why doesn't it fall into that category? I mean, I, I guess the underlying question is where does it come from then? Right. If it's not a tiki thing. Yes. So let's give it some sort of the origin of where it came from. So sure. the Singapore thing actually is a gin based cocktail that came from Singapore. Big surprise. Let's go figure that. Yeah. Didn't yeah. come from Tijuana. No, okay. no. Now this drink was developed back in 1915 by Neong Tom Boon. Hmm. And he was a Chinese bartender that actually worked at a place called Long Bar, which is actually in the Raffles Hotel. And I guess this is a famous hotel in Singapore. Hmm. Raffles. Raffles. Interesting like, name. Not, like ruffles, like the chips. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. You I know mean, like, mean, like, do you get raffles <laughs> when you go there? Do you, like, put your That's name it. in? That's it. Do you put and... your name in and hope to God you get a free hotel room oh, or something? Oh, that'd be beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, so the initial call for this, this drink and the simplicity of this drink actually used to be called the gin sling or the hmm. straight sling back in 1913. So before he created it and added all these other things to it, mm-hmm. it actually was kind of, you know, like we talked about before, you take a basic drink and then you add stuff to it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's what it is. He basically took a gin sling or a straight sling and then added stuff to it to make the Singapore sling. It's like movie sequels, right? It's like you take the basic uh, formula and you just add more explosions, more whiz bang, yeah, zippity doo. Number two and three never end up being the same as number one. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is the best of the original three. Okay, I got you on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right on that one. That yeah. was a definitely for sure. Yeah. But Counterpoint, Temple of Doom, worst of the first three. Oh my. You know what? Actually, that's Steven Spielberg's worst. He even he hates that movie. Oh, it's and he it's, made the movie. It is so, so racist. But also, too, it's so dark. <laughs> yeah. Like if you look at the other two movies, they're more like kind of comical, adventure, upbringing, and funny and adventurous. Yeah. And that one's more like this doom and gloom, death, child slavery, child slavery yeah. process going yeah. on. Get it together, Steven. Oh my goodness. So, anyways, so the recipe actually was published in 1922 in a book called Cocktails and How to Make Them. Pretty original That's title. That's a good title. Yeah. It took some long time to think that one through. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but um, actually, the Singapore sling even popped up in newspapers back in 1897. So oh, really? Again, this is one of those drinks where like, it's kind of questionable. So the Singapore it, sling did? Yeah. Or, oh. So was it, was it 1897 that the drink was created, or was it 1915? Okay. It's one of those drinks we talked about mystique, before, yeah. the mystique, and okay, we're not quite sure. So there's like, you know... There's one story you can follow, or there's another story you can follow, and there really is no significance to which one is the truth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I now, gotcha. a sling, you're going to ask, what is a sling? Mm-hmm. So a sling is a term for a drink that is made back then in the 1800s, and it's basically sugar, water, spirits, and ice. 
Okay. So okay. so that's very simple. Yeah. Now, so what's the difference between that and a cocktail? Right? So remember, yeah. I think we talked about cocktail. Cocktail is sugar, mm-hmm. water, which is the, the, well, the, the ice, actually. Right. A spirit and mm-hmm. a bitters. Right. So really, this is pretty close to actually the definition of, of a, a cocktail. cocktail. But not quite. It's like sort of just left of being a cocktail. Exactly. Right. So the Americans are actually the ones who claimed to make the sling back in the 1800s. Now, the Europeans, they had their own version of sling where they actually added other ingredients, such as citrus, bitters, and other liqueurs. And therefore, same thing we talked about in Singapore, then he also made the Singapore sling. So mm-hmm. he took a regular sling, added some citrus to it, some bitters to it, and some other liqueurs to it, and boom, now right. you've got a Singapore sling. So is this like, is one of the reasons it's kind of cocktail adjacent do, is due to like, uh, I mean, we've talked about this before, the kind of secrecy surrounding right. bartending, you know, like special drinks, particularly in tiki culture. Yes. So, no, it's not the same kind of thing. So what ended up happening was that Don the Beachcomber did have, she have this on his menu, mm-hmm. and so did Trader Vic. Mm. So... Um, but the thing is, when Don and Peachcomber and Trader Vic came into play, it was in the 30s and 40s. Remember, we talked about that. Right. So, now, I mean, well, in that significantly later. I mean, even, even exactly. if we accept the 1915 date, the later 1915 yeah. date. So now that recipe's yeah. already out, yeah. right? 1922 is published. Yeah. So to these guys, like, well, we'll put it on the menu because it's tropical, but it's not a tiki drink because it doesn't have that secrecy and the recipe's already out. Anyone can make it anyway. Right. So, in other words, I can get a Singapore sling at. Let's just say, let's just do it today's world. Like, thank God it's Fridays or Casey's or Kelsey's or right, whatever. Right, right, yeah. Where you can't get a zombie at a Kelsey's. Understood, or yeah. A so you have to go to a special bar to get a yeah. zombie. It's been a, it, it's become a bit of like a staple of, of even of everywhere you go. Like family restaurants. Exactly. Right? Okay. So that's why they didn't consider it to be actually part of the tiki culture because it's, you can get it anywhere. Isn't right? that interesting? Now, you know what's funny is that my mom. Who, who doesn't really drink very much. Um, she really loves herself a Singapore slang. I think you told us before, this yeah. is like your mom's favorite drink. It is, yeah. It's it's quite interesting. I can't remember where she developed a taste for it, but it may have been in like Paris or something, which just sounds ridiculous. But, uh, well, you're, you're yeah, right. yeah. Now, the recipe actually, for a while, actually, uh, was stopped being made. Like, the drink actually was stopped being made for a while. Oh. Uh, in the 40s and 50s, and actually, was actually the recipe was forgotten. So, so, and I mean, this is right, well, okay, 40, 50, so this is just... Around the tiki culture. Yeah, like just before, just after, like like around the tiki culture time okay, being created, yeah. right? So the recipe actually was kind of forgotten. Actually, so it was not why? being made. So because I mean, it's a tasty damn drink. I gotta oh, yeah, say, it's yeah, made correctly for sure. Yeah. Now the reason why, for the most part, is because in the forties, vodka was introduced mm. to the U.S. culture, the okay. North American culture. So when you use vodka, all of a sudden, all these gin drinks that we know are right. now obsolete and like a vodka They're yeah kind of yeah like, like it's, it's, gone, it's the right? old school kind yeah, of thing it's old right? school so let's try these but new drinks like so does a vodka and i simply don't know but would a vodka singapore sling taste significantly different than um i'm imagine it would have would, less zing I, well i think so because of the juniper right uh-huh, that's exactly. a big huge yeah. basically gin is infused vodka right. think about it right? right 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 so yeah if you take out the juniper i think i'm pretty sure that would taste take affect the taste of how it's mm-hmm. gonna come out like okay. the output right yeah. so uh yeah so the tiki culture took it off its menus mm-hmm. and so therefore the drink was kind of forgotten and wasn't made as often right so we've been talking about the uh, singapore slang for a little bit here yes. um and we've been talking a little bit about some of its ingredients particularly yes. the booze yes uh but but and and we've also spoken about uh its progenitor the the gin sling yes what the hell does a Singapore sling consist <laughs> What's in of? A Singapore sling. You got you that right. Ask. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you two recipes. And the reason why I'm gonna give you two recipes is because remember we talked about before that some of these recipes are questionable, the the origin or not. Nineteen fifteen sure. or nineteen or eighteen ninety seven. Yep. yep. Now also too, the Drake actually disappeared for a while. Mm-hmm. So through my research I found that when it came back up and people wanted this drink to be recreated and come back into the, the society mm-hmm. Everyone's like, well, what's the recipe? I don't know. Hmm. So some people guessed at what the recipe was. Sure. Yeah. There's a story I read where apparently it was written on a napkin in the 1930s, and then someone <laughs> found it in the 1950s, uh-huh. saying, oh, well, here's the recipe, original recipe, because someone wrote it on a napkin, like one of their relatives or something. So I I'm pretty sure that that's how Oppen- Oppenheimer developed the nuclear bomb. Up a napkin? Yeah. <laughs> Just drew a circle and a lot of lines going yeah, different they're, directions? They're pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a center. This we call, what's it called? Uh, ground zero. This yeah. is ground zero right here. 
<laughs> you do not want to start on ground zero. <laughs> yeah, I have become chief at destroyer of worlds. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go over Boone's recipe and we're okay. going to go over another recipe. So okay. Boone's recipe is one, and this is also be in the description, by the way. We always do this all mm -hmm. the time. On the website. Yes, yeah. exactly. So uh, one and a half ounces of gin, a half ounce of cherry her herring, which is like a kind of a brandy. Okay, but not to be confused with the fish. No, not the, not the fish. Okay, no, so, no. so folks... Whatever you do, don't go out and buy a piece of. <laughs> do not and blend in a herring with cherries and then place it into your drink. <laughs> That's right. No fish. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, hey, it's important. Uh, you know, this is just important. I, I'm just, I'm just saying it how it is. Stating the obvious. You know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No herrings. No herrings. Okay. Okay. Uh, quarter ounce of Cointreau. So okay. So so I'm sorry I interrupted, but one okay. and a half ounces of gin, half ounce cherry herring, a quarter ounce of qu Cointreau, uh -huh. a quarter ounce of Benedict. Benedictine? Benedictine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know it's B&B. &B. That's how I know it. <laughs> right? And that's not bed and breakfast. That's actually the drink. Yeah. Uh, four ounces of pineapple juice. Mm. A half ounce of lime juice. So you see, this is already a lot of ingredients. Yeah, this is this is a big glass. Yeah. Um, well, not a big glass. It's a lot of ingredients. Yeah. A third of an ounce of grenadine. So that's where you get that kind of color. The maraschino. The color yeah, look. Yeah. And a dash of bitters. Okay. So now the other one we're going to do is called the Smuggler's Cove Recipe. Great okay. name. Yep. Yes. So that is one and a half ounces of gin, mm -hmm. a half ounce of cherry liqueur or brandy, mm -hmm. okay, uh, a quarter ounce of the Benedictine, mm -hmm. simple syrup, uh, here's your simple syrup, yeah, yeah. Uh, lime juice, mm -hmm. soda water, regular bitters, and then orange bitters. So nice. this is a very complex drink. Either mm -hmm. way you put it, this is a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So probably the reason why it's not made very often. Yeah, like, well, hang on, let me get all the recipe. It here. takes some effort. Yeah, no, I, and, and it's funny actually with my mom because she'd often be like, "Why is my drink taking so long?" So now I know. Now you know yeah, why. I'll be yeah, able to explain yeah, it to yeah. her. That's cool. Um, so it seems to me then that that the major difference, other than neither of them, well, this would be a similarity, I suppose, neither of them having any fish in them, um, is that, that you know, <laughs> boy. Um, uh, but but the the smuggler's cove recipe I noticed doesn't have any pineapple juice. Correct. So what happened was that a lot of the tiki bars back in the days would add pineapple juice in the fifties and sixties because the general public saw tiki drinks as something sweet and that you didn't taste the alcohol. Okay. So back in the fifties sixties, it was like faux pas to like, wow, oh, I taste that gin or hey, I taste that vodka. Right. You kind of added fruit like pineapple juice or orange juice or something in there to the tiki drinks because if that's what they want. Right. They're looking to get blitzed without... You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't yeah. want to taste it, right? Yeah. Um, and I think me and you talked about that before on one of our other podcasts that some of the drinks got simplified in some ways during that stretch because mm -hmm. while it's more about let's get drunk and I don't want to need to worry about tasting the alcohol, but let's get drunk and... And get sloppy. The quality of the drinks went down, Wasn't right? so important. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Flashbacks of uh, my, my early 20s. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we all went through this stretch, right? Where yeah. it's like, sure, it's a good quality drink. Just give me five of them, will you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just keep them coming, will you? I'll take twelve. Yeah, exactly. Well, and it's funny What's because taking you so long huh? because like like definitely when I was younger, uh, if I was getting you know like let's say I was getting like I don't know something terrible like a rum and coke or something like that. I just wanted to taste the Coke. It'd be like, oh, it tastes like watered down Coke. Yeah. Uh, and it's not as good as regular Coke, but you know, meh, it tastes like pop. Um, but now I, I, I actually sort of appreciate a a more alcohol flavored drink um like as you know i mean obviously not just like straight whatever for the most part but but partly just because it reminds me okay i'm drinking alcohol yeah you actually um, get so, your money's worth so yeah right? well 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 you're, well you're getting your money's <laughs> worth but also it's like it's an alcoholic drink it's an alcoholic drink and i'm gonna pace myself because i am a semi-responsible adult that's right i mean you know? uh i'll give you an example so i do some parties sometimes and we do some sh uh, rounds of shots mm -hmm. and stuff like this and a lot of the, some of the shots i make are so sweet that you don't actually don't taste the alcohol right and they'll tell me oh my god this is dangerous because you know what i can have like 12 of these right now yeah yeah, exactly. But they know there's alcohol in there, yeah. right? So they're like, okay, I need to slow down. <laughs> uh, it's all part of growing up, I suppose. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Also, too, but I think that through time, our uh, our palates more mature, too, and that we want to taste the differences. Mm -hmm. Like, say, in gins. Like, me and you've had these conversations about gins mm -hmm. and different kinds of well, yeah. floral notes or what other hints of everything else we're getting in there. And and th th well, th this was actually going to be my next question, yes. is, is what type of gin should you be using 
in this type of beverage. I'm guessing yes. it's probably a more dry gin because there's already so many other flavors and exactly. stuff. Exactly. You don't want something that's got a lot of floral notes to it. You mm -hmm. want something that's like basically like a London dry gin or something Okay, like yeah, that. like the standard. So like... you want to do, you can either do bar rail top shelf, mm -hmm. but you want to make sure that it's a gin that's basically kind of neutral. Okay. Right? Now, I've, I've heard those terms before. Yes. Bar rail and top shelf. Yes. I, I have a fairly clear sense of what top shelf is, but bar rail has always, honestly, to my mind, bar rail has always produced the image. Uh, and you'd see it in like old like Bugs Bunny cartoons where there'd be like the hard on his luck guy. I who love would, how I mean you associate would, the Bugs Bunny to Yeah, all yeah, yeah. Where, where, where like, you know, he'd be sitting at like the far end of the bar and the bartender's on the other side and he'll say like, give me a vodka straight. And he just puts his hand out onto the bar surface itself. And then, yeah. then the glass slides, slides from the other end and bang. Into his, into his yeah. hand. Yeah, and so that's how I've always imagined bar rails. <laughs> um, but but I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. You know, I'm going to try this someday and see what happens. Uh, I'm sure. Crash. Ron, yeah, Ryan, but what are you doing? Stop Why throwing you? drinks around. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> You're breaking glassware. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to do bar rail. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Do I look like Daffy Duck? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Holy God, get some respect right here. <laughs> so the difference between bar rail and top shelf. So let's just explain what bar rail. Bar rail actually is what the term, the word says, bar, and it's a rail. So hmm. when you're at a bar and you're looking at the bartender and he's at his station, mm -hmm. usually will have his, you know, his, his garnish and his glassware beside him. Right. And this is sort of like on the far, like as the customer, it would be on the far side of the bar. On, on his, yeah. on the bar's tender right, side. Right, right, right. Right. Then there's usually like an ice well. You'll see him. You'll hear mm -hmm. the ice kind of going <sighs> to the glass. Yeah. Right. And then just below that, right at a kind of hip level, there's actually this steel shelf. Okay. And on there is all the spirits that he's going to use for most of the night so basically the bulk of the night okay and what those are are basically is the um so the generic brand sure i'm gonna call it no name brand okay of spirits right so what i mean by no name is that it's basically like the the bottom not necessarily the bottom some of them are good some good quality i mean we use picardy and on our yeah. rum so i can't say it's bottom but it definitely is not a uh, high price, premium, yeah, classy spirit yeah. alcohol, right? It's kind, of, it's kind of like the basic bitch of the. It's like of kind the, of like the basic level. Yeah. And then the top shelf is actually those ones you see behind the bartender, usually on shelves, elevated, usually lit up. Sure. And uh, those are more expensive because mm -hmm. they're a higher quality. Sure. So, example, you take, say, a Bacardi white rum. Mm -hmm. That's a bar rail, mm -hmm. which we have I mean, where we are. And then you take, say, Bacardi blended aged rum. Right. Well, that's more top shelf because it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a better quality rum. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. therefore, yeah, it's going to cost you more. And that's what's called the top shelf. I see. Yeah. And that's the difference between top shelf and bar rail. Now, the the story I want to actually mention this is because I, lived in, I worked in the States. Remember, I told you about sure, that. Sure, yeah. Chicago, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, in the States, there are actually companies that actually will produce spirits for you. And it's like their label. And it's basically just, it's like the no-name brand. Okay. So one right. of the companies is called Bellows. So okay. Bellows is a company that's kind of like this no-name of spirits. And they mm -hmm. make a gin, a vodka, a rye, a rum, sure. and uh, a scotch. And so I used to have this customer come in and he would tell me, like, Craig, please, whatever you do, don't bellows me. <laughs> and I was like, it's like what? pardon me? Pardon me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? And he goes, bellows me. Because like last time I came in here, all I had was bar rail and I had this massive headache the next day. So I know oh, okay. that I don't want bellows. Now, did he have 30 of them? Because <laughs> Well, that could help too. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, and I, I kind of agree with him. When you usually do the cheaper alcohols, that's when the headaches usually come into play. Yeah, they're a little less filtered and like you end up with some impurities. They're usually and... a little more harsh too on the palate. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I agree um, with that. Yeah, example, like we use uh, Gordon's gin. Uh -huh. um, Which is our... a decent gin. Like that's what I use okay. when I'm when, when I'm just sort of mixing really like like yeah. gin, gins and tonic if I just want, or gin and tonic when I just want something just like, bang, yeah. you know, gin tasting. Yeah. It's okay. But if I'm making something a little bit fancier or it's a special Or occasion, gin on ice or something. Oh, then yeah. You want oh, something yeah. a little more yeah. top shelf. You yeah. want something a little more refined. Yeah. Right. Um, well, and, well, and as, as I've said, like I'm, I'm a big fan of the Dylan's. I think it's number twenty-two. It could be wrong on that, but yes, it's a fantastic that's it's, it's amazing, unfiltered gin. Um, um, so you get some juniper, but you get a whole other bouquet of weird stuff going on in there that I uh, quite like, I must say. But you know what though? I, what I like about the Dylan's gin, and you're saying bouquet and all these other uh, elements to it, mm -hmm. it's not like um, I don't know if you ever had Bombay Sapphire, where Bombay Sapphire has, and it's a good gin. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. 
but it's so floral. It's got so many yeah. elements to it. Yeah. It's like okay, I can't. It's 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 a it's a tough gin to work with when you're mixing, especially tropical tiki drinks. It's kind of overpowers. It overpowers anything you put it into it. Right. So it's like okay, it kind of takes away from everything else. Mm-hmm. So um, the gins that I actually use and I'm more uh, famous, uh, I like like I rather use mm-hmm. is the a the top shelf gin. And that's, sorry, that's not no, Top Shelf, Top Shelf, but actually the name of the company is called Top Shelf, which is kind of funny. So I guess oh, they're okay. Top Shelf. Top yeah, shelf. no, we're going into an Abbott Costello routine. Right I know, there, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um, another one that um, actually, thanks to you, I hmm. actually went out and purchased. It's good. It's Muskoka. Muskoka oh. actually makes a gin now. Well, I mean, I know they make a pretty damn good set of beers. So and uh, here's the thing, and I mentioned this to a couple of people I know. They're like, "Oh, well, yeah, every beer company's doing it now. It's like everyone's making gin and everyone's making mm-hmm, vodka." Mm-hmm. No, this is actually a really good gin. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I've got a lot of gins in my repertoire, in my inventory. Mm-hmm. And this is probably one of the top ones, I'd say. Well, and I think I, I think actually I got to sample a little bit of it last yes. week, right? Or like like earlier yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, so it's got a nice, good yeah. hint of juniper in it. Like a, it, it hits it right to the far, forefront, so it yeah. brings it right to the very front. Yeah. And uh, that's what gin's made out of. So why not just bring it right to the very forefront, yeah. right? And it yeah. makes it great. It makes a good drink. No, oh, right on for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Way to go, Muskoka. There you go. See, yeah. sponsor us. Just beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Do we get get something for that? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Some sort of kickback. Wait, oh, sorry. You get all the kickbacks. I usually get. Well, I'm the one things. that keeps. Yeah, you know, I'm putting their kids through college the way. Uh... The way you're drinking it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now, my kids too. Well, there, hey, you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, I've got a question though, and it, it yes. sort of goes back to something we we when when we were talking about the recipes. Yes. You mentioned Smuggler's Cove. Right, and we've mentioned this before in a previous yeah, podcast. Yeah, and, and like it, it, it rings a bell with me, but yeah. I can't remember, was that the name of the original bar, the original Tiki Bar, or was nope. it nope. something so, else? No, so Smuggler's Cove actually is a bar, but it actually was established in 2009 in San Francisco. Okay, so it's modern. And yeah. it's one of the top rum exotic cocktail destinations in the world. Not just in the States, in the world. Impressive. Now, they actually showcase over 550 different kinds of rum on their shelves. <laughs> So imagine, you don't even usually see 550 bottles in no, a bar. No, not at all. Never mind, just rums. That's amazing. So yeah. Martin Kate is the uh, owner. He's also a connoisseur of rum and exotic cocktail drinks. Hmm. Um, he also is the author of Smuggler's Cove. Ah, okay. okay. Now, Smuggler's Cove is a book that we've mentioned before on his podcast. And I think uh, if you remember Chris uh, Howe from uh, Evo... Uh, also mentioned this book as well. That's right. Okay, so, yeah. No, when he had a he had a well like thumb through like oh, like yeah tabs and yeah, notes yeah. and everything. Yes. Yeah. So Smuggler's Cove, the book is actually kind of like the Tiki Bible now. Hmm. A lot of uh, Tiki uh, mixologists or even bartenders I know in the gen- in the market mm-hmm. or even that I've read with mm-hmm. suggest that this is basically one of the books you definitely for sure have to get. Right. Um, so it, he actually wrote it back in 2016. Had it published. Uh, with his wife, Rebecca Kate. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, too, it's like I said, it's kind of like the Bible, but also, too, it also has original recipes from Trader Vic and Don the Beachcomber. Okay. And on top of that, on top of that, that's right, if you act now uh, <laughs> and call him the next 30 minutes, 30 minutes, yeah, um, yeah. He'll throw in all the recipes to all the exotic spices and ingredients that go into tiki drinks. Oh, wow. Like florum. Remember we talked about florum Well, before, I remember it's top like secret. Sin, sort of cinnamon-ginger combination. Yeah, but, well, I remember asking uh, Chris. Uh, Chris, yeah, and, and, he, and he, wasn't, he wasn't too keen on <laughs> spilling uh, spilling the beans there. Yeah, so. so if you're making tiki drinks and you also need to come across an ingredient that you can't identify or you don't know how to make, pick up the Smuggler's Code book, and I'm telling you, it's in there. Wow. Yeah. So it's very cool. Excellent. Yes. So today we're going to go on to a new segment. Hmm. I know. Every time I start a show now, it seems like we have a new segment. Yeah. Well, well and I like them. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always fun well, to do new stuff. We kind of give a different spin. Every time we do a new show, it's like, hey, we got something new for you there. Yeah. So, so yeah. Like, so, so what's, what's the segment? Word translation. So the segment is actually going to be word translation. And what okay. I mean by that is that I've noticed when I travel... That thank God the norm of her being there with me because I probably would not be able to get through a lot of places I've gone to mm-hmm. through my travels because she knows yeah. Spanish and she knows a lot of these other languages in the culture. Right. So well, that makes things a lot easier. Yeah. So we've all been there, right? Or maybe you haven't, but if you're going to travel, say, in somewhere in the Caribbean mm-hmm. or even in Hawaii, then maybe it's some basic words you might want to know mm-hmm. um, just so you don't come across like some ignorant tourist yeah. and that you, you know, are showing sort of thanks and, you know, showing them that you basically appreciate their culture, their language, 
and that you're you know you're happy to be there. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go through some words that we're gonna translate into uh, just basic words that we know in English, mm -hmm. and we're gonna translate those into phrase. Uh, sorry, into uh, either Hawaiian mm -hmm. and Spanish. Cool. So we're gonna say the word in English the first time, me and you. Okay. And then the next one will be Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then one after that is going to be uh, Hawaiian. Hawaiian. Yes. Understood. And so therefore, and we're also going to put this also in the description. Mm -hmm. So that way you also know how to write it. Mm. Okay. Cool. Um, I think it's just kind of cool because I'm, I'm one of these people, when I travel to a country, I want to show appreciation. Mm -hmm. Likewise, you know what yeah. I mean. Like I go to a full, I go to a resort. You're not where, just there to take, you know. No, no. I also want to give too. Yeah. You know what I mean. And yeah. show appreciation, like thank you for you know your hospitality. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what we came up with this segment. We're thinking like you know what better way to do it than to do it through this show, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is we going to like I said we're going to say a word in English and then it'll be translated into uh, sort of Spanish the first time and then uh, Hawaiian the second time. Yeah. C can I tell you a funny story here? It's a bit go of a for tangent, it. but no, um, go for it. So I, I spent uh, about a year living in China uh, doing the, uh, the English teacher thing. Yes. And I was uh, dating a girl uh, who, was, who, who was also Canadian, uh, an English speaker, not a, a uh, Cantonese or Mandarin speaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd, been, we'd been basically living together, kind of, we both had our own places, but we, we spent most of the time together. And um, she, uh, one night, uh, she got really, really bad, uh, like, cramps. Mm-hmm. Um, and all she wanted was a hot water bottle. Okay. <laughs> so we, at the, at the time we were living in sort of this, uh, building complex, but there were, uh, you know, there was a corner store and, and we knew the, uh, the fellows that work there, you know, we basically communicated with smiles and pointing and grunting at things. Right. Um, and so I went down there and tried to communicate hot water bottle. <laughs> Well, they're actually not knowing what the words are. No, no, no. I didn't know right. what the words yeah, were. Yeah, I was yeah. just trying to describe it. So I like drew a picture. Uh, they brought me a coffee maker. Uh, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not it. Um, so, so oh, about that's good. That's yeah, good. thirty minutes later, now you know the girlfriend. She'd been phoning me like, where the hell are you? You know. Yeah. And then finally, I don't know. I just I managed to draw a picture, and then one of them kind of slapped his head. And he was just like, oh, 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 okay. No, we don't have those. <laughs> oh no after all that oh it was hilarious but but hey props to them they were so lovely and kind they actually yes. took me out uh, and they led me to a local pharmacy like they closed down their shop for me no way yeah and they took wow. me to a pharmacy and and lo, lo and behold i got my girlfriend a hot water bottle Yay, so uh, i know yeah i know dun, all dun, about dun, trying dun, to dun, communicate dun, without dun, language dun, dun. <laughs> So it's drawing pictures is the way to pictures, go. Pictures, grunting, yeah. um, kind of doing like a like a Mad Libs uh, charades kind of thing. I imagine like like I said, you when you moved there, like, you probably didn't know much of the language, right? I so... didn't know any of the language, and I had like I had a little translation book, but it didn't have hot water bottle in it, but it did have the words hot water and bottle, so and so kind of I kind of like them. grunted and pointed at like because you know it had it spelled it out in English and yeah. in uh, Chinese characters, yeah. um, and uh, but yeah, yeah, like obviously it's called something else there so hot water yeah. bottle meant nothing to them right you know like like after, uh, like like you know bring me a kettle like what are you what, yeah. what, pal what, oh what was my going? god but um but yeah so anyway all, all that to say it's important to know a little bit of the lingo when, when you, you go, go to places, a, exactly. yeah exactly and uh, have you ever seen the movie gardens of the galaxy part two i have so do you remember the part where they're actually in jail and they're trying to tell groot to get something and he comes back with a desk. Yes, yes, comes yes, back yes, with yes, yes. Arm. <laughs> they're trying to tell him to get like a fin off the top of a head or something. Yeah, yeah, And he yeah. comes back with everything else, but even a but desk at one point. It's like no, a fin, a fin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's remarkable that we ever managed to communicate. Quite honestly, wow. Oh. That is uh, that would be a challenge. Definitely going to a new country for sure. So, what are some of the words we're uh, okay? We're so, looking at? the first word we're going to do in this translation is hello. Hola. Aloha. Goodbye. Adios. Aloha. How are you? Como estas? Pahea oi. Thank you. Gracias. Mahalo. Yep. Yeah, so hope that, now what we'll do is, like, as you notice, those are only four basic words mm -hmm. or phrases, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So each time we bring a segment, we're going to get a little more and more complex sure right yeah 
So um, it just, it's, like I said, it just it's going to help people if you want to go to, uh, you know, like I said, anywhere in the Caribbean or Hawaiians. And that way you get to learn some basic words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Did you know? I did not. Okay, so we gave you some Polynesian facts about Tahiti. So it is a common tradition in Tahiti to wear a tiara. Um, usually, you know, that's the, you see the flower that's usually in the girl's hair. Okay, yeah, no, you I've see seen in, like, that. Like, yeah, or yeah, wine yeah shoe. Magnum PI, that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So the flower apparently, if it's behind, it's usually behind one ear. Sure. Like, yeah. It's on one side yeah, yeah, the other yeah. side. It's like it's like I mean, in North America, you know, it's like how nerds put pencils. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, wait, wait, but but the okay, no, now please continue, and then I'll finish it up with a joke. <laughs> oh, no, I'm afraid to ask. Yeah. All right, so if it's on the left side, you are taken. Hmm. If it's on the right side, you're looking. Okay, now that's really interesting because in North America, regardless of what side of the ear uh, the nerd puts the uh, pencil, yeah, he's still a nerd. Well, and they're they're still <laughs> they're looking. They're just yeah. still looking. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and and just to Please. be clear here, folks, I uh, I uh, uh, frequently put pencils behind my ears, but if, I'm not looking. Hey, if it's any consolation, I used to be a computer nerd back in like junior high. So yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, don't sit there and think like, well, cranks me picking on the nerds. Actually, no, no, no. I used to be a nerd. No, and, okay. and, and nerd is not a, n- not a, uh, Bad thing. uh, an epithet. Yeah. It's, uh, Hello, the Steve geek jobs. Sh- yeah. The geek show inherit uh, the earth. Yeah. Mm. Jerks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's do some other facts. The letter yeah. B does not exist in the Tahitian language. So Bora Bora actually is Pora Pora. Huh. When it's, uh, which means first born. Visitors kept on saying Bora Bora, Bora, Bora. so yeah. then they're like, "Well, let's just change it." Interesting. Now, <laughs> now I think I think there's certain um, places in Thailand where um, P's uh, and F's yeah. uh, uh, are used a bit differently. So, so there's a place called Phuket, which is the proper pronunciation, but a lot of North Americans pronounce it Pha, right? Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. There you go. That, that That's my contribution that's a cool to this discussion. Fact. Yeah. You know what? I did not know. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the show is turning into an English class. Yeah, there exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's, uh, it's, sorry, uh, English, history. Hawaiian, and Spanish And class. Spanish, yeah. So we're, we're going yeah. all the way around the world. <laughs> yeah. We're making sure that you people are well-educated out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. it. So here's another cool fact. So in mm. the Tahiti um, country... Mm-hmm. In Tahiti. In Tahiti. Yeah. In Tahiti. Uh, if you have a mailbox, it actually is not a mailbox. It actually is uh, a box that French bread is delivered twice a day to the residents. So if you want to get your mail, you actually have to go down to the post office to get your mail. Well, so... I mean, I'm glad they've got their priorities straight. <laughs> um, but shouldn't it be called a bread box then? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they actually call it, they call it mailbox. Okay, I'm but, just saying is that me and you were just like, oh, yeah. look, there's a mailbox. It's like, why, why is it so he, long? Why is yeah. he shoving bread into the mailbox? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, those Tahitians, they need that's their carbohydrates, a, that's a I lot guess. of bread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess they're paying into getting paid in bread. Uh, yeah. oh, hey, hey. Bu- 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 oh, boy. Bu- bu- that, bu- that was bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember when, when I we used to get... I guess have good jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I do have them. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got jokes, but you're not going to like them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember as a kid, like, we used to get milk delivered to the house. But... No, wait, wait. Is that, like, milk back in the glass? N- no, no. It was, like, cartons of milk. So so okay. in, in BC, like, uh, I mean, I guess we have them, but they're not, like... Most people don't use them as the bagged milk. Well, okay, here's an interesting fact. And actually, I know it's because I, I work at Aero Sussex, which has a lot of tourists from around the world. Sure, yeah. So I had so, a couple in there from Vancouver, and they actually told me, you are the only province in Canada mm-hmm. that actually has bagged milk. We, Everywhere else, it's a cart. Well, like a carton, yeah. yeah. So so we definitely used to have bagged, or like in BC, yeah. there, there did definitely used to be bagged milk. I don't know what the case is today, but bag milk makes so much more sense. Hello, yeah. It's less environmentally damaging. It keeps the milk fresher longer. It's lighter. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's brilliant. I love bag milk. Now, okay, maybe one of the things why it's like that is because the bag is in a plastic bag and I guess that doesn't decompose easier. 
than say maybe a milk crate. Yeah, well, yeah, because the milk cartons are like pa- like wax paper. paper kind of. So what if that breaks down faster than say a plastic milk? So that maybe that, that may be the case, but just in terms of volume. Well, yeah, you can get four liters in like and like yeah. we buy milk here in Ontario. By the way, folks, if you're not from Ontario, we buy it in this bag which like has fairly three strong cylinder plastic bags, bags yeah it's basically is equivalent to four liters yeah and you stick it into like a jug that sort of looks like what you would put juice in yep uh just the bag and you clip off a corner of it and, and there you go bob's your uncle it's That's uh right. it works beautifully no. I've, I've been amazed at how long i can leave milk in my fridge and still have it drinkable no okay so i have to ask this question <laughs> were you one of those people and of course my, my, my brother used to do this uh. Where the milk would be down at the bottom, maybe it'd be like a half an inch left, Ugh. and you wouldn't touch it because you don't want to be the one that has to put a new bag in. No. Okay. No. So my no. brother would do that. He would like, we're like, um, uh, you know, like, why don't you have some syrup? No, I'm, I'm good. But as soon as I open up a new bag, oh, boom, he's on it oh, like a yeah, fat kid yeah. on a smarty. It's all over. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. really? Seriously? You just can't put a new bag into the into the container? Like that just takes too much effort. He's refined <laughs> laziness into an art. I know. Yeah. I know. Like, I want to meet your brother. I want to shake his hand. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's in the mines of Ca- in Calgary, so have fun with that. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he only comes up for sunlight every three weeks. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> It's a scary thought because he doesn't shave for three weeks or shower for three weeks. So yeah, that's I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> better pretty, him than me. It's not yeah. a pretty sight. Let's yeah, just say that. No doubt. <laughs> it's like, geez. But he's making a fortune. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah. So. <laughs> and on that note. And on that note. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> not that the show is over, but hey, the show is over. Mm-hmm. So let's just tell everybody about who we are and mm. what we're all about. This is actually www.tikicentralcanada.ca. All one word. That's right. There's no hyphenations or spaces in there whatsoever, folks. Mm. Um, and you could put it uppercase, lowercase. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you really wanted to, you could do lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, and it still wouldn't matter. Exactly, yes. <laughs> now, on there is pictures of me and Cam in our bio. And hey, you're getting um, your four, we're, what, 14th show now? So yeah. I promised you on the 20th show that we'll take oh, your picture. Yeah. Oh boy! So the way if I calculate it out, it's gonna be right around oh, Christmas. I can't wait. So what yeah. better gift I can get you, man, than a new photo? Wow. Okay, but hey, it really, can't be any really you know, generous. Can't be any fish in there. You can't put any antlers on. Okay, I'll um I'll see if I can find my old banana hammock and uh, there we go. I'll get this started. <laughs> <laughs> oh god wait wait is banana hammock a term for speedo no comment <laughs> oh god this is an all-age so you know that right? that's fine <laughs> okay that's so good oh god <laughs> i might have to leave the show yeah, I don't know how this yeah is gonna go yeah, i'm gonna use all right your, yeah okay uh, yeah. yeah cam show now from here on <laughs> in yeah so anyways on there also too is links to itunes and google play which actually will subscribe you and what it will do is mm. every time we have a new show uh, without the without the banana boat, um, then yeah, you'll get a notification saying, "Hey, we have a oh, new show." Oh, it waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> so what? It shrinks or something? Ah, <laughs> uh, no comment. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> what is this, George Costanza? <laughs> I was in the pool. I was in the pool. Yeah. There's shrinkage. There's shrinkage. Oh God. Ah, <laughs> uh, poor George. <laughs> poor. Come on, hello. George had no chance at all anyway. No, no, no. That's it. I he's mean, a he, he had a loss guy. before Come he even on, started. Yeah, he's got no yeah. shot whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, also on there, too, is also streaming for all of our shows. So if you want to stream like me uh, when I'm in the car, I don't want to actually like have to download anything. You can just stream it. You can do that. Also, too, there is a spot for questions and comments. And We um, love questions and comments. comments. Yeah. Not at the same time. Maybe one comment and then a, then a question. I, I I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if if you're gonna a say stuff like <laughs> like I have a comment and a question. I found your show extremely unenjoyable, and now my question: When are you going to stop? Uh, I yeah, you can you can keep. We're those not going to answer that. Yeah. Well, actually, we'll just add more shows. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think I think I think our best response to that is is to just keep doing what we do. Exactly. Well, hey, we have over 500 listeners now, so uh, taps off to that. Mm. So we're doing good. We must be doing something right. Mm. Anyways, I think we are uh, kind of uh, depleted here. We need some more drinks. Yeah. Well, I'm basically out of beer, so uh, that's not a good sign. No. You know, when he runs out of beer, folks, it's uh, everyone run for run for the run for the fields, run for the hills. It's a bit of a Doctor Jekyll and Mister. Yeah, that's right. Run for the hills, folks, because yeah. it's going to turn ugly. Yeah. There we go. There's some swearing, so maybe we should go before this starts. Perfect, Nugan. There we go. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, folks. I think it's time to get out of here. Have a great evening, I'll guys. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Thanks. Thanks. 
well, I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys, hey, guys, where's my drink? 